custom. Welcome uh, <laughs> to Senate Education today, Thursday, March 31st, 2 19 in the afternoon. We're going to continue H227, H727 for an hour. We're going to then move into PCB testing uh, about 3 30. <clears throat> and then we are going to skip. We're going to go from about 3 30 until 4 with Jacqueline Kelleher and then finish uh, 4 to 4 15 or so with Amy Wheeler Sutton. So I'm guessing about a 4 30. Uh, uh, break time or adjournment. So with that, Ms. St. James, uh, you left us, uh, I believe, on page 56. This is H727, an act relating to the exploration information and the organization of union school districts. Um, yeah, thank you. Well, thank you. That's the same. Bam. Um, I'm going to recognize you on the floor tomorrow. Would you do that, that actually, yes. Yeah. Please. <laughs> <laughs> So I agree, we left on page 56, line nine, mm -hmm. uh, which is section 721, joining an existing union school district. Is everyone there? Mm -hmm. Okay. So uh, this is, there is a, so what we've talked about thus far are independent school districts getting together and deciding to create a brand new school district. And then the work they need to do in the transition period to be up and running by their operational date. This section addresses changes in union district membership um, and other amendments to articles of agreement. So 721 is joining an existing union school district. So it's not two independent, two or more independent school districts getting together to merge and create a bigger one. It's the bigger one already existing and a school district wanting to join it. So it's not the creation of a brand new school district. It would be expanding a school district. Can I just go back? Mm -hmm. Oh, my God. <laughs> I mean, we were, I'm, no, oh, no, I'm on page 56 right, right, right. and 55. I'm just looking at that the state board of its own initiative can request of the board of supervisory. They would request, but they can't just make change to the board membership. They can request it, but that doesn't mean it happens categorically, right? No. So what this says is, if a soup, so uh, so uh, the state. So this is about a just yes. Yeah, so let's yep. just read it. If a supervisory union includes at least one district that is a unified school, school district, district, and the state board, the state board on its own initiative or at the request of the board of a supervisory union or the board of one or more districts in the supervisory union, may at any time. So the state board is the one making the adjustment to the supervisory union board representation. Well, they can request it. Okay. Oh, I see what you're saying. That I'm just wanting yeah. to make sure that they can't just step in and say you're going to change your membership. Well, so uh, they, can. they can. So that's they what can. this language says. So, oh, this, this, <laughs> yeah. so this concept, um, it's new. It's not, in, it's not in current chapter 11. And it was a policy consideration, so it's on that handy policy document that AOE um, provided. Um, section 790, it's on the bottom of page 2, 719, Supervisory Union Board Membership. So, in... In a different area of the law, so in the supervisory union chapter of Title 16, the law says that upon application by a supervisory union board, so a supervisory union board coming to the state board, say, um, and the state board may waive any requirements of chapter five or seven of this title with respect to the supervisory union board structure, board composition, or board meetings or the staffing pattern of the supervisory union. And then it, it talks about what needs to be demonstrated in order to do that. So that already exists somewhere else that the state board may waive requirements related to board composition. Mm -hmm. So this is saying that uh, the state, uh, so in, in the supervisory union section, it's only upon a uh, request by the supervisory union board that the state board waives any of those requirements. Mm -hmm. This is saying that the 
the Unified Union School District um, or the Board of the Supervisory Union could request that waiver or the State Board on its own initiative. Yeah, I'm just trying it's, to figure out what the value of that is. Of having the State Board. Yeah, I mean, was there is there is there a significant a reason why that is so? You know, so they can request it, but does that mean that they can make the change? And the request to me is a little softer and says they can request it, but it doesn't mean they are doing it. That was my only. That's my only question. Yeah. So it says that they can adjust the supervisory union board representation required by two sixty six of Title sixteen, and that says. At any time, the school board of any district assigned by supervisor union and having more than three members shall elect from such board three members who shall represent and act in this meeting of the supervisory union which is signed. So, um, cool. this is new, it's new law, it's, it's new to chapter 11, yeah. and it was proposed by AOE. Mm -hmm. And it was considered by House Education, and they decided they wanted to add this option into Chapter 11. So this is a policy consideration um, that I think. The option is by the board that they could. They don't need to be asked. They could come in and say, "Yeah, we're we don't on. think." Correct. Your representation accurately reflects the number of students. Yep. And so we're changing. Yes. The the composition the no the representation required back. So yeah, the numbers. The composition. They, they, they so like the numbers of which board members from which town. That's what they might change. Yeah. So if you look at section two sixty six. So again, I can't. This is not. This is new. This is not required chapter right. eleven. Where are you looking right now? So I'm in um, title sixteen. Yeah. Oh. oh. You're, I'm not on the draft. The draft is page 56. The, the draft is page 56. You're looking at the statute section. That it's referring to, okay. yeah. Okay. And so the statute that it's referring to is under the supervisory union chapter in Title 16. And that statute says, for the purpose of holding meetings and transacting the business of the supervisory union, mm -hmm. the school board of any district assigned to the supervisory union and having more than three members shall elect from such board three members who shall represent and act for it in meetings of the supervisory union for which it's assigned. Can you so, do the English translation, please? <laughs> um, I, there's, there's, it's, it's, there's one more sentence, but I'll, I'll we won't go there. But um, <laughs> so it's creating, a, so a, the school board that's a member of the supervisory union has more than three members on that school board. Then they, the, 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 the that school board elect the, The school board that has more than three members elects from the board with the three members people who are going to represent it on the supervisory union board. Right. Yeah. And so this is saying um, that representation required by Section 266, so that this is really addressing school boards having more than three members. Yeah. This added language is giving the state board, it could either adjust the representation required by the three board section, the three board member section, at the request of the board, or it could do it on its own. State, the state board could do it on its own initiative. In so, please, go ahead. so this is all fairly and actively. So they could say, okay, there was two boards that each has four members, so they have to do the 266. Mm -hmm. So they elect somebody, but for some reason, the way this union district was formed, right? We're talking about union districts. Yep. So the yes. supervisory district was formed. That it's no, the, the different representation on that board is no longer fair or accurate Correct. for some reason. So the board could step in and say, okay, even though you elected a member, you need to elect two members. 
Yes. Something like that. So I believe, the, so this is language that was proposed by AOE and was adopted okay. by House Education. I believe the intent behind it was there's already a provision in the supervisory union chapter that says the supervisory union can waive requirements, including board composition. So it would be that three board member statute, but only at the request of the boards themselves. This language in chapter uh, in uh, chunk one of H727 gives the state board the authority to do it through its bond on its own without waiting for the request from the board. Did the state board weigh in on this? I don't well, know if you know they were there. Sam Purser. So if you could maybe we just flag it and yeah. if they we yeah. propose it like what's the it would be good to get an example of like maybe you know what what exactly yeah. were they the problem they're trying to fix. Yeah. Exactly. Okay. Anything else before we move on? We'll have AOE in. No. no. Okay. <laughs> no, thank yeah. you for that. <laughs> Let's see, James. Donna has already emailed me to tell you that she can give you a sample. Okay. 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 That's good. Um, okay, so we're uh, looking at joining an existing union school district. We're on page 56. And I will be. Um, I'll be kind of quick. So I'm going to go uh, page 56, 57 through 58. Uh, yeah, through 58 essentially. So if the action is initiated by a district outside the union school district, so town A with its own school board or is its own school district and it's interested in joining union school district. If the, the town outside of the union school district is the one initiating it, then they request approval by the state uh, board. And the state board has to make a determination that it's in the best interest of the state, the students, the districts involved, and aligns with the policy set forth in Section 701. And if they do so, then the decision on whether or not to, to um, join the senior school district can go to the voters of the outside school district. And if the voters of the outside school district say, yes, we want to join, then the union school district itself has two years within which to hold a vote to allow the outside school district to join. Okay. Is there any recourse if they don't hold the vote? There is nothing in this. Okay. And there's, so there's nothing by a date certain except two years. Correct. Okay. And that is... Um, this is all current law with the exception of um, what the state board has to determine. That's not in current law. So the language that's in, in this draft or in, is the past uh, out of the house uh, is meant to refer back to the policy statement in section 701 of this bill. Um, talking about the best interest of the state, the students, the districts, and section 701 um, contains the goals of Act 46. So I just wanted to point out that the concept of joining an existing union school district is all in state in current law, with the exception of ex what it is that the state board needs to determine. Um, there was clarity and detail added on that. And it's the same thing if, the, if it's the union school district itself that's looking around and seeing if there are any school districts that they think it would be good to have included in their union school district. The union school district's gonna figure out if they wanna approach the state board. If they do, they approach the state board. The state board has to make that, find, the, that finding. If the state board does make that finding, uh, it can go to the voters of the union school district on whether or not to allow this outside town to join. If the voters of the union school district say yes, then the voters, so I'm on page 58, line three, the voters of the, um, and then the voters of the outside school district have two years to join, okay. or to hold a vote on whether or not they wanna join. Okay. This is a policy, another policy consideration. Um, in current law, for this option, when it's the union school district inviting someone in, 
the voters of the invited school district are required to hold a vote. There was a policy decision made, and, we, and that is what's reflected in front of you to mirror the language for right, the, the opposite direction, where it's the outside school district that's approaching the union school district. There's no requirement for a vote to be held there, it's just the two years. So it's the same language here. If the voters of the school district approve the offer to join the union school district within two years after the union district votes to invite them, um, then the uh, union school district will be um, enlarged. Any questions on that? Okay. But they don't have to hold a vote. There's nothing in here just... compelling them, correct? And it gives them two years to do that. Okay. Um, and then um, page 58, uh, subsection C, line seven, is um, the certification of the election. Um, and uh, uh, who does that? So the Secretary of Education has to designate each of the students in the school district to be in, uh, enlarged. And then there has to be filings of the Secretary of State's office to reflect not just the um, results of the vote, but also whether the school district is enlarged. Um, and those certifications need to be filed with the clerks of the school districts and the towns involved. Um, and then on page 59, a union school district enlarged pursuant to the section has all the powers and responsibilities to include the union school district of this title. So um, uh, uh, basically the, the powers and responsibilities section, uh, the real important part is um, unless they agree otherwise, um, if, if the operational date is delayed pursuant to an agreement, then the joining school district shall share in the expenses of the union school district beginning on the date the Secretary of State records the certification of the Secretary of Education. So at what point do they start having to be uh, a contributing member of the union school district? Mm -hmm. Um, and the votes of the electorate under the section shall occur by Australian ballot. That's not currently required in state law, but it was added because both the creation of a totally new union school district and the ratification of a vote to withdraw from or dissolve a union school district needs to be by Australia. It's, there's a requirement for Australian ballot, so that was added to the section. Amendments to articles of agreement, I'm on page 59. Um, this is all current law. Uh, again, rewritten for clarity and detail. So uh, I think this, at least for me, this is a little dense. <laughs> I know, and if I'm saying that um, at this point. So, um, if, so the union school district voters can only, so the union school district voters and the board can only amend the articles of agreement in certain situations. Mm -hmm. And that in this section 722, starting on page 59, line 13, just spells out the specific situations in which the voters can amend the articles of agreement or the board itself can amend the articles of agreement. So the voters can amend a specific condition or agreement in the district's articles of agreement if the condition or agreement was set, was set for is a distinct subsection in the warning, the, in the original warning to take the vote on whether or not to form the union school district. So those, that like original um, warning with their original articles of agreement. If something was set out as a specific condition or agreement in that, then the voters can amend it. So the warning would have all the articles of agreement listed? If the specific article, if the if um, no, I don't think it would have all of the articles of agreement, but if that piece of the article of agreement was specifically in the warning, then the voters can amend that. And then remember one of the issues that 46 this came up is that the articles of agreement were kind of given to them, but maybe in a new district they're creating the articles of agreement, or are they just taking articles of agreement that are already written by AOE or something? So um, I think AOE would be better to speak to uh, whether there are like 
model uh, articles of agreement out there, but I'm wondering if what you are referring to is addressed on page 61, and that is those districts that were created by state board order. The voters weren't voting on articles of agreement there. The state board created those right. districts. And so there's a provision uh, to address that on page 61, subsection E, districts created by state board order. This is obviously new law. It's not in um, current chapter 11. And it's meant to address um, articles uh, who can amend articles of agreement that were created by the state board because they were not voter approved. Um, and the language elsewhere talks about voter approved articles of agreement. Does that tie into this lovely map that's been in this room and I just don't know the providence? What yeah. do the green lines represent? Those are the force, those are what the state proposed? No. Those are um, supervised, I believe those are supervised. Mm -hmm. um, I think those are union district um, border. <laughs> Yeah, these are those are all the no, those are supervisory, those are supervisory union. Um the green lines are supervisory union. Supervisory it drives me nuts that the key doesn't have that. What are these valley ones? I think those ones were Pretty. in play. Order. Yeah, I can't remember what wow. the dotted ones were. Were those the final orders? The, this, this, was, this, was, this was written as, as it says there it's after the fine. Supreme Court decisions holding the people filed a lawsuit after the board's order, and the Supreme Court said, No, this is going to hold. So here are the districts. Sorry, but there has been there's been changes since that map has been published. And I think maybe those dotted towns were like in the process of withdrawing or challenging or they hadn't had a vote yet or something. But I'm glad you're looking at it. We spent a lot of time trying to understand it. <laughs> <laughs> but you can find your school district. That's the test. You found it? Okay, good. You found it. <laughs> Um, so do you want me to go into any more do you, do you want to does that answer your question about the the articles of agreement that were not voted on um, on, on page 60 there's a part that's highlighted that what, remember you were saying that these mm -hmm. are these are policy questions um yes mm -hmm. so um Subsection C, line uh, 10, page 60, oh, reduction, reduction of grades so operated. So it's current law that um, voters cannot vote whether to reduce the grades that the union school district operates um, and then to begin paying tuition instead unless the state board um, agrees to it. But what's new is the finding that the state board has to make in order to approve that um, change. So, thank you. On that makes sense. So back to page sixty-one. Parents' mm -hmm. union's like, oh, we've only made three. Pages. <laughs> sixty-one. <laughs> we, we got three pages. <laughs> and got. On page sixty-one, the process that so the, for these districts that were created by the board order mm -hmm. to change the articles of incorporation, they have to vote of the voters. And I wonder, that seems to me to be a policy decision. Why, why couldn't the school board or the district board change their own articles? They can. They, so, oh, they yeah, can so if you read line 10 through 13. On 61. On page 61, yeah. Yes. The, um, the authority to amend the articles is the that phrase is on page 8, and then it, the rest of it is the, eight, the line, I'm sorry, line, line eight. 8. The rest of it is the referral to the order from the state board. And if you jump to page 11, it vests either with the electorate or the board pursuant to the provisions of Article 14, as that article was issued by the state board or subsequently, subsequently amended by the voters of the union school district. So Article 14 in the state created districts addresses where that authority vests. So you would have to refer back to Article 14 in those state created districts and there's the chance that that article 14 has been amended at some point since then but um or i'm sorry not article 14 but that the um the um the articles of agreement in general have been amended since then um so it is it's it's the same there's there's authority 
for the voters to amend certain things and the board to amend certain things. And that was uh, addressed specifically in Article 14 of those articles of agreement. But the board does not have authority to change all our, any all parts of the articles of agreement. I don't know what Article 14 says. So if the, there is a you opt in, uh, uh, there is a possibility in the universe of possibilities that Article 14 says the board can change all, all of the articles of agreement that it wants. Um, I don't know what Article 14 says, but Article 14 is where the power lies. Okay, because that I'd be interested to know if they can change. It seems to me they should be allowed to change their articles of incorporation at the board level because it seems like it's all voters since it's by Australian ballot. But do they use do they talk about Australian ballot when a vote by a board? No. So um, um no. So uh the, are we still talking about subsection E? Well, no, well, no I'm In going general. down to F. So I, I'm interested oh, yeah. in E, like if the board can change it, because then it says the process yep. is by Australian ballot, which I would think a board wouldn't use Australian ballot, but it makes it seem like Australian ballot has to be used. Right. Line 14, it's the vote by the voters that has to be by Australian ballot. Oh, vote by the voters. So the voters are the electorate. Yep. As, as, yes. As the yes. So just going back to page 60, mm -hmm. then the voters can't vote to change the grades unless the board approves, allows for them to vote mm -hmm. in the first place. Uh, let's see. I mean, that, that, that's yes. what the highlight says. Yeah. So yes. So in other words, the board, the voters can express an opinion and then have the board. It's interesting. Well, I think that the, the, yeah. the plain language says the voters shall not vote. I think there's other ways they could express an opinion. There could be a petition yeah. by 5% of the voters yeah. saying we want you to go to the state board um, and make this request, but um, can't so they make their that. case in front of the board and Correct. then the board says yay or nay. Okay, Correct. that's not that. Yes. Is this language from AOE? Uh, section E on 61? E. This was included in the draft, the original draft provided by AOE to start the committee bill. So just, I thought this was current law. <laughs> it's not. E is not current law okay. because E is okay. addressing the state created okay. uh, through uh, Act 37. Okay, I keep looking for the highlights as new, sort of new. No, so okay. let's clear that up. The highlights represent changes that were made pursuant to this policy document prepared okay. by AOE. Okay. AOE drafted this rewrite. Mm -hmm in a working group over several years mm -hmm. with Secretary of State's office, some private bar members who work with school districts, mm -hmm. um, and some other stakeholders. And so the original draft went through House Education and appears as it does today. And I'm trying to, as we go, mention this is all current law yeah, or right, this is right. new and added because AOE faced this issue and helping people through Act 46 mergers. Mm -hmm. uh, so there is the concepts in here are overwhelmingly current law. Mm -hmm. There's detail added. There are new issues that have arisen due to Act 46 and the activity of all of the mergers. And so that some of that clarity is new. Mm -hmm. But the highlight, so there is language in here that is new to state law that is not highlighted, but the policy decisions that were made by House Education are all highlighted. I'm just wanting to know, um, it, it, the paragraph reads okay, I think, but I just, should we understand what's in Article 14 or have reference to the what's in Article 14 here? because. If, if we're supposed to be reading this as a school district, 
We don't know what Article 14 is. Just gonna email what Article 14 is, just thinking that she might. <laughs> my, so my guess is that the school districts who were um, now school districts um, due to state board action yes. are intimately familiar with what, sure, what Article sure. 14 is. Um, We'd like to be as well. Yep. <laughs> I mean, is there a way to encapsulate Article 14, which includes bing, bing, bing? Absolutely. Yeah. Okay. 20 page later. Right. <laughs> um, Donna has not emailed anything about Article 14. Okay. Well, I would be interested to know. Yeah. <laughs> I would be interested to know if the it seems to me it's an it's a policy issue, but maybe I'm just confusing it with something else. This whole thing about whether it vests with the electorate or the board is decided by Article 15. Why is it not just always the board? So the board. So we haven't talked about that. So page 60 is what um, is where uh, there is information on what the. Um, the top of the page on line one, it's where the union school district board itself continues the articles of agreement. Um, and they can amend a specific condition or agreement in the district's articles only if the condition or agreement was not set forth as, as, as a distinct <coughs> subsection. No. It's not. So, so they can only do some Correct. this on 60. But then over here it says also if the pursuant to the provisions of Article 14, the it vests. So, um, subsection A and B, so page 59 and 60. We're going backwards here. Oh, <laughs> we didn't want you to miss it. <laughs> so, page, I, I hope this helps. So, page 59, subsection A, and then page 60, subsection B. They're making a reference back to the warning. Uh, for the vote. Right. So those that the A and B are only looking at um, articles of agreement that were created through a vote. Right. Subsection E on page 61, there was no vote here. I agree. Yeah. Okay. Maybe I misunderstood where the confusion was. No. Oh, so they, the, the, the state board made an order. Correct. Required a merger to hear your articles of agreement. Mm -hmm. I want that board that was created the right to change those articles of agreement. And this says you may or may not have those articles, do that right, depending on if it was vested in you or the electorate in Article 14. Correct. So I would like to know why are we doing it by Article 14 and not just saying the board has that authority? We need to know it's in Article 14. Yep. So I, you can either. Oh. Donna would like to testify. <laughs> would you bring Donna on? Oh, and maybe sorry. just keep her up there. That would be great. Uh, <laughs> just as a as another research. Right. That's all right with you. Oh yeah, I mean this yeah. is. Um, I think yeah. Yeah, that's great. We're gonna do a Jeopardy rough start. I was thinking. Doing a what? We're going to. Don't you worry. We're going to zip right through. We're going to actually, I, I, you'll laugh when I say this, but we're going to fly by um, page, uh, after page um, 60. Okay. In fact, we may even finish. Oh, right through, Jerry. Mm -hmm. Very cool. You mentioned the word Jeopardy rounds as well. That's coming after all the chunks, so. though. Are we waiting for Donna? Or we are. Okay. Let's just wait on this article 14 okay. because first of all, he's bringing it up. Has uh, agriculture been eating our chocolates, by the way? I have, I think. I killed for another one of these chocolates. What do you think? I know what that? happened to all of them. No more, my friend. Really? Oh, oh really? <laughs> Ask me. <Wow>. Shall we see? <laughs> Well, that basket is kind of uh, Yeah, that happens in transportation. There must be an empty file. We need a safe. Yeah. <laughs> I was thinking about getting actually a little fridge for the end of the session. But I love seltzers. I love <laughs> seltzers. They're better cold. They're better cold. Here we are. 
Hey, you're buying. You're kidding. I think I saw that as one of the lucky. Yeah, that. Uh, Donna, are you there? I am. Hello. I when I sent that message to Beth, I did not. Can you can you hear me? Yes. Yeah. She didn't mean right now. <laughs> can you hear us? I can hear you just barely, but can you hear me? Yes. Okay. We're we're wondering about Article 14. Yes, and I I don't have it right. Oops. I am. Can you hear me? Yes. Oh, gosh. Wait a second. I've got to do this differently. Yes. Wait. Can you wait one second, please? Sure. Donna, I sent you the full Zoom invitation. Is it great? Dial I, I'm here. I, I think the problem I was having is, is that I still had up the Zoom, and so I was I was delayed. Um, so can can you hear me? Yeah. Yes. Okay. I'm sorry. And when I sent that email to Beth, I didn't mean that you needed to pull me in right now. Just that if it would be helpful, I'd be happy to talk with you in general about this. Yes. Session. This would be this would be a good time to talk to us if you know anything about Article 14. Right. So if I can back up just a little bit, the way that the Please. existing statute is set up is that essentially almost everything is decided. If, if it is going to be changed in the Articles of Agreement, there is the opportunity for almost everything to be only decided by the voters. Um, and in the, in the current statute, that, that provision that if they are going to stop operating certain grades and begin tuitioning them, that it needs to go to the state board first, that's also in the statutes. So when the... Um, when the state board was creating the, the default articles of agreement, um, and I can send you a copy of, of Article 14, but what it did was it, it listed them in, in, in groups. It listed um, a few things that the, that the local board could change, which is similar to what's currently in statute. It listed an, that almost everything could be changed by the voters only. And, um, and then there were certain things that couldn't be changed or couldn't be changed for the first two years. So for example, um, they couldn't immediately vote that the districts that were going to be merged weren't the districts that were going to be merged because then that would have just totally undone the merger. Um, so Article 14 tried to give the same deference to the voters that the statute currently gives to them so that only the voters can come together and make changes to their articles of agreement for almost everything. There are, there are a few, um, and I, I was going to look this email up before I um, sp spoke with, oops, are you there? Yes. Okay. Um, I was going to look this up and I can try to find it quickly if you'd like, or I can just send it to you afterwards. I did think of a few examples where it's likely that a board would be making changes. Um, one example I can think of just really quickly is, is that in those places that are, um, uh, uh, that elect their representatives by proportional to town model, um, when the new census comes out and the board is directed to change um, the, the the number of voters potentially, if the census changes um, the, the, the relative proportion among the towns, um, 
that would not be something that would be appropriate to go before the voters because that isn't something that is a is a yes or a no that is a that's a calculation Absolutely. that needs to be changed to comply with whatever the new census is so that kind of a change to the articles of agreement would be something that the board would do something such as um um I'm sorry, I'm trying to think. Uh, I can't, I'm sorry, I'm not even thinking, but uh, of, um, well, it could be which, which certainly which grades are operated, even though they mm -hmm. would have to go to the state board for approval would be something that, that, the, um, uh, that the voters would vote on. If they wanted to put in more protections, one of the issues you've been hearing about a lot has been whether or not this, the the local board has the ability to close a school and have students sent to a different town. That's certainly something that the voters could vote on and change in their articles of agreement. So yeah. I don't, I mean, I don't know if this is, I mean, trying to give you a little bit of an overview and I can, I can write it out if it would be helpful to see any of this in writing. Um, Committee, are people feeling a little and, bit more comfortable uh, now? Yeah. 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 I think we're feeling much more comfortable. Yeah. Okay. And the other, the other thing, do you mind if I go back to the, um, to the changes on the um, SU board or no, should I give you, cause I can give you some examples about that if that would be helpful. Yeah, please. Um, so as, as, as your legislative council was telling you, um, although board membership on a, on a school district board has to be representationally proportionate, um, that that requirement does not apply to a supervisory union board, and it it does not apply because in order to have that proportional requirement apply, um, a board needs to um, per perform municipal type duties, but also has to be an elected board. If it's an appointed board, then there is no requirement for that strict proportionality. So statute currently says that if you are a school district that operates a school, regardless of your size, um, you send three of your board members to sit on the SU board. If you are a district that does not operate any schools, you send one member to sit on that SU board. So that, that's fine if all of the districts are fairly similar in size, but but there are the you know there is the provision that that legislative council was telling you about in 261 that says if the SU board comes to the um, uh, to the state board they can ask to have those numbers changed in some way, and you might want to have that happen if for example you have uh, and and this is this is a true example um, if there is um, one very large unified union school district that has you know five or six towns in it and has quite a large number of students and you know po and population they would have three members on the board if there's also a very tiny town that operates only elementary school and pays tuition for its high school students they would have three members on the board so you have a situation where you have a very tiny town that only operates a few grades and has very small number of students um, having half of the votes on an SU board. And the only way that they could come to that board could come to the state board and say, wait, this just really isn't fair. We really should have a few more uh, on the SU board that represents this multi-town, very large um, uh, district rather than having equal numbers on this very small town and, and this very large multi-town district. Um, but if you, can't get, if you can't get more than a three to three vote to go to the state board to ask for that, then you can't go to the state board to ask for that. So this, this, this was something I think that might have been suggested by the school boards association, even though it was on the the, the proposal that we had sent in about different policy considerations to consider was what about having some other way that it could come to the board? Either the board could look at it itself, the state board could look at it itself and, and um, 
uh, ask everybody to come before it and say, this just doesn't seem fair. What, what do you guys think? Do you think that maybe this lar very large unified union school district should have a few more members on this SU board? Or are you all happy with it? Or, or one of the districts could come to the state board and, and raise it as well. And that was the situation that, that had arisen. It's helpful, very helpful. Anything else while we have Ms. Russo Savage? Donna, do you mind us uh, sort of hanging out there? Or would you I'm happy to, I'm listening anyway. Okay, great. Okay, thank you. Okay. Anything else right now? Ms. St. James, should we return to page 61? So uh, subsection F, line 14, this is the process of a vote by the voters. And so it gives, um, uh, it refers to sections that we're about to look at coming up um, for warnings and ballots and um, uh, it's all current law. Um, this has been uh, rewritten for clarity and detail. Um, I will say that um, a, a situation that Donna mentioned um, regarding adjusting the number of board members, especially if it's a, um, a proportional to town population, um, that's spelled out specifically here um, on page 60, line 17, subsection D. Donna was mentioning that that's something that you don't want to leave to the voters. Right. Um, so it's spelled out specifically here that this is um, uh, something that the board uh, would be able to amend in the Articles of Agreement. Because the voters, it's leaving the voters the chance to create a unconstitutional uh, representation on the board. And then um, G on page 62, subsection G line three is new. It's not legally necessary, um, but it is added almost as an admonishment to remind everyone that they can't amend their articles of agreement in a manner that is otherwise contrary to law. <laughs> it's, not, it's not legally necessary. It's uh, it was a uh, it's something added um, in the draft by AOE and uh, remains in the bill as passed by the House. Mm. Must be an interesting story. Transportation yeah. might remove this type of stuff. Yeah. Likes to remove this kind of Yeah, Senator Kitchell likes to. She makes redundant language. She doesn't like that. It's not needed. It's not needed. Um, it's a policy decision. It's not needed. It's, it's a. Uh, it, it goes without saying, if you right. will, that um, they can't break the law. They can't break the law. Um, Is it in response to a specific um, event that might have appeared to be um, breaking the law somewhere in the southern part of the state? <laughs> that would be a question. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Could be. Yeah. <laughs> that would be a question for AOE. Yeah. Yeah. I'm okay. striking it. You know, and, and but if you wouldn't mind just checking in uh, with AOE and others on, on that a little bit, or, or they can even come in. When they come in, I have a list of questions that we're going to ask them. But I think looks like the committee is <coughs> supportive of getting rid of unneeded language. Okay. Uh, page sixty-two, subsection or section seven twenty-three. Decision to vote by Australian ballot. Um, Let's see here. This addresses if um, uh, if the uh, if the articles of agreement don't already say that you can vote by Australian ballot, then the voters in the school district may vote to do so at any meeting. Um, so warned, um, any category of vote to be taken by Australian ballot shall proceed in the manner in all towns um, within or member districts of the union school district. Um, let's see, all, uh, this is mostly all current law. Mm -hmm. um, talks about commingling on page 63 and um, what happens if the votes are not commingled to who's doing that counting and who's doing that reporting. Um, and if the votes are commingled, um, where are those um, 
where are those uh, ballots put? So they can, it's up to them to commingle or not? Sorry, Sharon. Please go ahead. Mm -hmm. They can decide to commingle? Mm -hmm. Yes. So if the voters determine that the ballots shall not be commingled on the top of page 63, then the Board of Civil Authority in each town um, shall count the ballots. But yes, that is. And the voters determined by changing the articles of agreement or something? Like, how would the voters determine that? Um, I think they can just vote to take. Uh, is it can vote to vote by Australian ballot? Wait, is it the vote? Is it the vote to vote by Australian ballot, or is it the vote that the district makes to determine how to count the ballots? Um, so let's go back up to um, line seven. <laughs> like subdivision A mm -hmm. or subsection A. Mm -hmm. So if it's if the articles of agreement don't specifically provide for. Um, uh, Australian ballot, then the voters of a union civil district may, may vote to take a vote by Australian ballot. Um, and then if we keep going, mm -hmm. um, this refers you to law that we're going to look at about uh, uh, an up and running school district, um, how are your votes um, taken? And there's a whole several sections about Australian ballots and how that um, proceeds. And so this is referring you to that if the decision to proceed by Australian ballot um, is made. Um, and then uh, because a union elementary, uh, so if a union elementary or a union high school district decides to proceed by Australian ballot, then the voters also have to determine whether the ballots are going to be commingled prior to counting the total votes. So remember, a unit school district doesn't have any member districts. They're all one. So they're all doing one. it statutes, but they're yes. direct the secretary to do so and include what should be included. Donna, you're not muted. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> so, Senator Lyons. Yeah, no, I think it's clear. So they just decide they're voting ahead. As to whether or not their the ballots are commingled, but it, they don't determine that by it's not determined by Australian ballot that happens. And this is just about the votes the vote. to decide whether to do a vote by Australian ballot. We're not talking right. about other votes like school budget. Correct. The vote on whether to proceed by Australian ballot has to be taken by a paper ballot, and that's on page sixty-three, right. line eleven. Right. But before that. Mm -hmm. um, if voting in a union element or a law proceeds, by, then the voters shall also determine whether the ballot shall be commingled. Senator Lance, can you just let us know where I'm, you're Oh, I'm on D on line 17. 62. That's 62. So also determine whether the ballot shall be commingled prior to counting total votes cast by a Australian ballot. It's not clear whether or not how that decision is being made that's all i don't know if there's anywhere in here that says how the decision is being made to commingle or not so later on upstairs um uh the vote by australian ballot sections oh. um in the kind of maintenance section you're okay. up and running how do you just normally okay. run um that's all in there this is also all current law okay thank you Senator Chittenden. I have a general idea of what commingling is, but I'm curious what the legal definition is. That they have yeah. polling locations and then they're just allowed to put the ballots together for recap purposes? Yep. Okay, so it just has to do with recaps. No, 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 no. no. So, no, we, we do commingles in the, C, the, the Chittenden South CBU district. Okay. So everybody goes into their own town okay. and puts Thank their you. ballots in, and then the ballots are taken out to CBU yeah. and they're Commingled. We're all together. So you, you don't know. know town, you don't you count it by right. town. You count it by total district. But they run Sarah. through machines day of. Just the ballots at the end are then commingled and stored together. They're not run through a machine. They're put in a box. The box is carried out to the school. The ballots are then just counted without counting by school. So they can go in any order. But they do go through a machine. Yeah, they do go yeah. through the machine. Yeah. Yeah. The, the, when you yeah. take it, when yeah. we take it out to CBU, right. you know, then it's done by machine. 
Well, well like, there's yeah. also, at least in our district, it goes by machine just well, to count well, how well, many people have voted, well, and well, then it goes into well, a That's always the result. Not the result. Well, that's right. Ours doesn't. Mm -hmm. But, but it's yeah. not counted when the vote is taken. The votes are put into a box. There's not okay. put into a machine okay. that yeah. you okay. vote in your town. So I don't know, Ms. St. James, do you want to add anything to this? We could always return to it. Sure. There's um the as we go on, um, there is there are specific provisions that address commingling and actually include, I think, some helpful language even for visual purposes about okay. allowing. Uh, uh, there's a, a there's a policy decision that's made later on about allowing uh, 24 hours for a vote for when ballots are commingled um, for mm -hmm. the vote to be counted because uh, I believe that there was a lot of feedback that uh, there was a lot of late night driving trying to get the ballots to a central location to oh, be counted. Yeah. <laughs> okay. so I only raised this because of how in depth we are going. And from what I understand of this topic, I almost feel like we shouldn't permit commingling in that we should keep the ballots with the machines that are run through in all these different towns because I expect these towns there there's friction with the mergers to raise questions and challenges and you will retain more legitimacy if you keep the ballots that went through each of the machines separate and distinct from the other ones for recount purposes that's just but I, I'm not going to die on my sword on this I just as no, I understand I, this I issue I'm thinking that. commingling yeah. is a questionable tactic to take I just want to bring uh Donna do you have anything to add to this um I could add the policy um thoughts behind why um, the agency and others believe that they should be commingled before counting. All right, why don't we um, start with that? Um, well, it is a single district. It is not, it is not a, a unified union school district is a single district. It is even if it has multiple towns in it. Any decision is made by the it, it, by adding together all of those votes and seeing what the totals are of, of yeas and nays. There isn't a breakdown of town A said yes or no, and that and that makes a difference to the outcome. It is the it is the entire count that matters. And we believe that that it, it helps disparate towns to realize that they are a single unit and they have a single set of students for which for whom they're responsible if they start to think about themselves as a single unit rather than say oh my gosh that town always votes the budget down and and has reason to not not be happy with what one town or another town is doing either they always vote an increase or they always vote it down or other kinds of other kinds of um of, of votes. So it, it helps that cohesive feeling of we are a single entity. And one of the examples I gave is that um, we lived for many years in Montpelier and there are um, there are different, I'm not sure if they're called wards or what they're called, but you, you get in line for what your own area of town is. Um, and But then they count all of our ballots together. They didn't count our you know, depending upon what side of town we lived on, they didn't they didn't announce, you know, the, the side of town that's over by the high school voted no on the budget. The side of town that's on the other side of town voted yes, because we're a single district. And it's the same concept. It's just harder to get your head around because there are multiple towns in it. All right, Senator Chang and then Senator Chang. No. I just want to say, as a South Burlington Board of Civil Authority member that has overseen probably eight elections now and spent some long nights uh, tallying results from four different lo polling locations, uh, we have different machines and, and we run the, the ballots through the machines, we get tallies for each machine. And that's for each of our districts. Yeah. We do co-mingle for the recap purposes, but for the day of, we still get the results. And I, I can't see how we would do that differently, especially with large districts. We're not going to pause and delay because they're, they're, they're voting on other things. They're voting on the school budget, the city budget. They're voting on city councilors, select board members. So, And they're also going to be different by town. Unless we're forcing separate ballots for the school district than the city. And then we, that, do we do that. We already do that. You must do that. 
We have separate ballots. Oh, so, we don't do that in South Carolina. Okay. So, you know, you're. All right, just, Senator Lyons, one second. Senator Terenzini, please. Uh, okay, well, in the same sort of vein from yeah, Senator Chittenden. Yeah. Um, so, uh, so a univite, let's say, pick a town, Shelburne, for example, right? Mm -hmm. they should, they're in a, one of these. I, I'm going to go in and vote, and the school questions are not going to be on the same uh, ballot as the town meeting day select board and all that. So it's two different ballots. Yeah. So I'm going to run through my tabulator, my municipal questions, yeah. mm -hmm. but then someone takes my school uh, ballot and puts mm -hmm. in a separate box. Later that day, it's transported to a central location mm -hmm. where mine is mixed with the three or four other towns. Mm -hmm. Okay, that makes sense now. What earlier the debate didn't make sense because where I come from, and obviously where he comes from, school and municipal are on the same ballot and you put it in the same tabulator. Well, that's why, I mean, you could still do that. I think this is may, may commingle, right? So you can still do that. That makes sense what I was saying. Yeah, yeah it does. Uh, Senator Cheney, you wanna go ahead? Yeah, so I'll just say, I, I really don't think this deserves a ton more debate, but I, I will just say, uh, as I understand how fervent people are on this topic, I, I see merit to the counterpoint that Donna raised in keeping them separate so that you have those communities and their voice heard so that they can know that their district voted this way or not. Uh, and I, I think that lends even more legitimacy to these discussions so that they can uh, get a better sense of how different communities within these districts feel about the budgets, about their school board directors. That's just me. It's good it's and bad. <laughs> yeah, but the, the districts can decide. Yeah. Can learn that. Yeah. yeah. Fair but current law, they can decide as well. This is current, correct? Or is uh, this the request from the agency? This is current law. This is current law. Okay. So that's why you have some doing it and some not. Okay. Still think you're going to be done at 3.30? Nope. <laughs> <laughs> All right, 10 more minutes. Let's see how far we, how far we get. The good news is we finished with the first piece of this. Yes. We finished with the organization formation piece. Mm -hmm. You'll see in the middle there, there's highlighted withdrawal mm -hmm. section. Mm -hmm. So that's the second chunk when we get to it. Okay. It's not in here. Mm -hmm. Now we're moving on to, um, we're on page 63, uh, sub chapter three, unified union school districts. So sub chapter three is all about You've got a union school district that's formed. You've moved beyond its operational date. How does it run? What's the governance structure and guidance? There's subchapter four, which is the exact same concepts, but for union elementary and union high school districts. So if we go through subchapter three, Okay, we're on page 63. So once we get through subchapter three, there's really nothing. There's a little couple statutes at the very end, um, but there's really nothing new in subchapter four. It's okay. just um, because a unified union school district has no member districts, but a union elementary and a union high school district do have the member districts. Some of the um, references to like a town within a unified union school district versus a member district, there's some language difference, but the concepts are all the same. So, um, Starting with uh, page 64, board terms. This is all uh, board members, board terms, conduct and meeting, quorum voting, powers and duties. Um, this is all uh, current law and it is all stuff that's been over in the formation section. So um, the uh, subchapter two talked about initial board members. Now we're talking about regular board members. They're elected at a warrant meeting. They assume their office, they're sworn in, uh, they serve the term that um, uh, a term of three years or until uh, a member successor is elected, mm -hmm. all current law. Uh, there's the quorum uh, requirement, uh, majority of the members shall constitute a quorum. Um, page 65, again, weighted voting, current law. The waiting vote is used to achieve constitutionality, um, constitutionally required proportionality, the number of members of the school board holding a majority of the total number of weighted votes shall constitute a quorum, and a majority of the weighted votes cast shall be necessary and sufficient for board action. Um, following uh, each annual meeting, the 
school district board elects uh, someone from its board to be the board chair and the board clerk. The, um, they have the same um, powers as a board chair and a board clerk of a town school district. Uh, the board clerk takes minutes. Um, this is uh, a little, this uh, minutes section is a little bit of um, additional language of the concept is based on current law in that the clerk is required to keep a record of the proceedings. The details of this minutes section is new language, but I would argue uh, the current concept. Um, and on page 66, the board clerk may be paid upon order of the board, again, not current law. And then again, remember we're in a unified union school district here. It's just the board members, nomination, election, and bond. This is all the same that we went over. You're gonna have so if by if by Australian ballot, um, if it's proportional to town population, the section talks about who qualifies as a um, candidate. Where does the petition go? Who needs to sign the petition? Um, and then the voters of the town within the Union School District elect as many board members um, as are apportioned for that term of office based on the population of the town. This is it, it's all the same as yep. what we talked about. Yep. Same as modified at large, remember that's mm -hmm. not current law because it's based on 1975 case law, but it's a concept that's been around since 1975. Same concept, who qualifies, where does the petition go? Same on page 69 for at-large representation. Um, let's see. And it brings right up to vacancy, which is yep. 71. Um, and then, uh, let's see. On page 70, so there's a requirement that the, uh, at the expense of the district, um, the clerk of each town within the Union School District is going to help them out and give uh, copies of the, the checklist um, uh, for legal voters. Uh, let's see. Again, all the same. So that's all for Australian ballot. If the vote is occurring for to elect board members, not, if not by Australian ballot, um, then this section addresses um, how the vote proceeds. If the district elects members under the proportional to town population model, I'm on the bottom of page 70, line 19, then the nomination of candidates occurs um, mm -hmm. at a town meeting warrant for the purpose. The voters shall only nominate a person who's present at the meeting, and then the person accepts or rejects the nomination. Um, uh, let's see. The clerk shall ensure the candidate is a voter of a specific town. If it's uh, someone under the proportional to town or modified at large, then those seats are tied to a town. Bond. Before a newly elected board member enters upon the duties of the office, the district shall ensure the district's blanket bond covers the new board member. And within 10 days after the election of a board member, the district clerk shall transmit the name of the newly elected member to the Secretary of State. It's all for All right, let's pause there. Uh, because I know uh, Mr. Fannin has an appointment he has to drive to, and so it's stop a few minutes now before three thirty. Is that all right with you? Sure. I'm just looking to see uh, how many more pages we have until we get to. Can I ask a question? Uh, yeah. Okay. Go ahead. Oh no, not to finish. But no, I know. Uh, center line to the question. Okay, so I'm I've, I've skipped way ahead. I'm just I'm going to ask a question. Of, yeah. Of, I just our want to be respectful of our right, as well. Exactly. Um, so on page 83, that allows the district clerk to appoint unified school district board members who are not on the ballot to aid in counting a ballot. So this is similar to what we do when we have any election and you, but is there any oath or swearing in that is, that probably should be prescribed? Yeah. There's nothing contemplated here. Okay. Sure. Well, that was a policy concern. Okay. Okay. And with the bond, as long as the candidate is, is in keeping with all of the requirements, they're automatically bonded, or would there be oh, conditions um, where they might not be? So this requires the district to ensure that the district's blanket bond covers the new board member, it's not a personal bond. Okay. 
Yeah. 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 Thank you. you know, as long as the person was Mr. Bannon, if so you don't mind joining us, we're going to do a switch. Yeah, I think um, okay. there's nothing contemplated in this, and I don't think there's that this level of detail. I suspect you're going to be able to be okay. pretty brief with us. Yeah, no, I, that's what that's what I thought. Thank you, Ms. St. James. Yes.